Hey, this is how to be a wine snob quickly. So first up is your bottle of wine. It will tell you already the country, the region and the grape. And that means that you'll be already one step ahead of the crowd as far as my experience is concerned. I would also add that if you know where the country is, if it's from a warm climate or if it's from a cool climate, that can help with describing the wine. So let's say if it's Australian, it's usually from, it's quite warm climate. So you usually have full bodied sort of wines that you get from there. And it's usually kind of rich wines as well. And if it's a cool climate, like say Germany, then it's usually light body and it's a bit more fresh and it's a bit more crisp with the uh, with the flavors and descriptions of it. What I'd also add is that to be absolutely uh, spot on about how to pronounce certain uh, regions and grapes, I'd go to www.wines.com for pronunciations. This can really help with saying things more correctly. Like I once heard someone say Sauvignon Blanc. No, that's Sauvignon Blanc. Uh, make sure that you kind of get these things right so that you sound like you know what you're talking about. Wine Folly has a great table of flavour profiles from you to choose from. So if there's a grape which you could say is like a Sauvignon Blanc, then they'll give you a whole list of flavours that associate themselves with that particular grape. And it means that if you're then trying to look for certain flavours from a wine, you can kind of pick them out and go, oh yeah, it does taste like gooseberries, it does taste like melons and lemons as well. Um, this is a great kind of way of learning about how to describe wine, so I definitely recommend it. Royal Parker's website and Vintage Chart is a great way to see which regions have had really good years and it shows the ratings of those particular years. So for a cheat code is 2005s, 2009s and 2010s were very good years for Bordeaux and in general quite a few other places. But there is also a bad year which is 2013 so that's a great way of talking about one good year and one bad year. In fact, if you mention UK Berry Brothers and Rudd, Just Serenia and Brooks and Cornio Barrow as places you've invested your wines in, that is top-notch snobbery. Um, a cheat code for this would be, oh, I've got myself a case of Burgundies hoping for them to age and get to their peak. Brilliant investment value. That would be complete class on your part. When tasting wine, it's about how best to describe a wine to somebody else, hence the fancy words you kind of may have to come across when you're talking about it. So Shiraz, Cabernet Sauvignon, Nebbiolo, those are like big, full-bodied kind of wines, so there's kind of think about black fruits, you know, sort of black currants, black cherries, and especially type in black fruits into Google, it'll give you a huge list of sort of flavours uh, to pick from, especially when you're describing that. Um, when it comes to medium bodied, so uh, your Merlots, your Carmineras and uh, your Grenache, these particular wines are more associated with red fruits, so like pomegranate, uh, more red cherries, these kind of words should be coming up. And again, you could probably type in red fruits and you'd probably get a list there. For white wines, uh, think of floral and yellow fruit. In fact, type in yellow fruit to Google and you get a whole list. Some of them will, I can mention already, which is bananas, uh, yellow apple, melons, there's your yellow fruits there. Um, we also have kind of greener fruits, which you can think, kind of think of your more of a grocery as such. So if you think of kale, um, kimichi and pear, um, also green peas, those are other flavors that you can pick out if you think the wine is a bit more greener as, su as such. I mean, all of these things is about how to best describe a wine. And so if it smells like mushrooms, say mushrooms, and if you want to back it up with something, then you can say, it smells like mushrooms because it's got that earthy feel. That's perfectly fine. As I said with about yellow fruits, it's all about kind of being more tropical. So you back it up with saying it's tropical fruits and so on and so forth. You can say pretty much whatever you like when it comes to describing wine. Nobody can really write you off, but you know, by broke, put them into brackets so that you can easily identify what to say for which kind of wines. Some Rieslings, uh, which is the grape, um, is comes across with a petrol smell. Yes, that's right, a petrol smell. It's not petrol, obviously, um, but it will come across as a petrol smell. So if you come across a Riesling and you say it smells like petrol, you're talking the business. Uh, you've also got Pinot Noirs, which is a bit more important, um, which is, it smells like forest floor. Uh, it smells like forest floor. 
I like to think of it, it smells like bin juices. Yes, that's bin juices, right? But you guys, you've got to stick to, um, got to, stick to forest floor. Um, as far as top-notch snobbery is concerned, think of uh, wines you need to dismiss. Yes, you're, you're, you know, there's certain wines you just won't drink, okay? So one of those are gonna be Prosecco, Pinot Grigio, Merlot, and Chardonnay. Okay, those are your four that you have to dismiss. So if anybody offers you any, go, God, no, not enough of that. Really? I don't think so. That's your attitude to them, okay? <laughs> and then there's obviously wines that you need to approve of. So that would be your Pinot Noir, your Cabernet Sauvignon, your Riesling, as I talked about before, and try a, a particular grape that's unknown, which I'm gonna give you, which is Sauvignon, which is from the Jura. And if you guys can kind of do that with most wines, that you're drinking which is you know if you can relate the grape to the region that's really helpful so like Nebbiolo which is Barolo or like Shiraz which is obviously from Australia and Malbec which is from Argentina these kind of help with making you sound much more like a wine snob so guys um, keep up the snobbery and uh, stick with us for more episodes like and subscribe and uh, we'll see you soon but uh, as for me I'm gonna get myself into this particular wine here at the moment Where's my glass gone? It's just disappeared. Got it. Have you really? Yeah, hold up. <laughs> there we go. Much more happier. Oh, hang on, it's not open. Mm. Guys, thanks for Thank watching you. our video. Uh, please like down below uh, if you like our videos and we will be having more content, which you can click here and here of the videos that we've done already. Or you can also subscribe just here by clicking here. Exactly. So we hope you see more of our wine content because we love You'll it. You'll love it as well, I promise. <laughs> <laughs> right. On that note, cheers. Cheers. See, see you, you guys soon. soon. <laughs> mm. <laughs>